be enthusiastic, find your niche. Don't let any of the opportunities to go past and don't have an ego. Episode 135. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture UK. I'm your host, Ryan Willard. And this week I'm talking to Oz Lancaster, who's the founder and director of Oz Designs, a London-based interior design company. Now, Oz works with a extraordinary array of high profile clients from royal families to high net worth individuals and she's got an international portfolio of stunning work and in this interview Oz and I discuss how she has grown her business how she's won those early clients and the elements of developing clients into long lasting relationships that lead to referrals or as she says how to tap into the veins of gold if you like And we also discuss fees and the importance of delivering consistently high quality work. So if you want to learn how Oz does all of this, sit back, relax and enjoy Oz Lancaster. This podcast is produced by Business of Architecture, a leading business consultancy for architects and design professionals. This episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, Business of Architecture's flagship program to help you structure your firm for freedom, fulfillment and financial profit. If you want access for our free training on how to do this, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you want to speak directly to one of our advisors about how he might be able to help you, please follow the link in the information. Oz, welcome to the Business of Architecture. How are you this morning? Hi, Ryan. I'm okay. You? I'm very Thank good. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. I was very excited to have you on the show. I, I thoroughly enjoyed our last interaction when we spoke and your energy and enthusiasm is so contagious. Um, <laughs> Thank you. And, and what you've accomplished in your career in, in, a, in a relatively short period of time, you said you, your business you started up in the last recession yeah, it's um, and you've got an incredible portfolio of of work in some of the most glamour, glamorous regions of London and around the world. And you're working with a very impressive array of high net worth clients and, you know, and, and individuals. And yeah, well, first of all, congratulations Thank on the business, so on the Thanks. business successes. <laughs> and, and I'm very excited to to talk to you about how you did that, how you've accomplished this and how the business got set up. So as I said, you set up in the in the middle of the last recession. Two thousand and eight. Set up the company in two thousand and eight. Um, I used to be a director, design director to a different company. Right. And um, I set up the whole thing. So the, their interior design branch, and they were very supportive to me. They were incredibly nice people. Um, but I thought I can do that myself. I always had a dream of following my own dream. And I, I thought I had the personality to, to run a company. Did I know anything about it? No. Was I very brave? Very brave. <laughs> looking, looking back, I was thinking I had amazing job opportunities. Uh, some of the very well-known design firms now and architect firms have offered me a job. I was incredibly lucky. Um, but I said no to everything and I said it, said it on my own. I, I called my parents. I said, mom, dad, what shall I do? I want to do it on my own. They said, okay, if you can't afford to pay your mortgage, we will pay it for you. Don't worry. Just go for it. Go for it. Let's see what happens. Well, it's not the end of the world if you fail, but failing fail doesn't mean a failure in the entire life. Just go. Let's see what happens. So um, our birthday is 8th of July. The company's birthday is 8th of July. 8th of July, 2000. Eight, set up the company. Mm-hmm. Never looked back. Not mm-hmm. even one minute. I never even thought one minute, man, what am I doing? This, this, is, this doesn't work. You're just working 24 hours a day. What, what, was, what was the first thing you did? How did you win those first clients? <laughs> it, was, it was actually ridiculous. So I said to a few of my friends, Uh, I used to be in the design center with the previous company. Right. So I made a decision very quickly within 24 hours. I talked to my employee. I'm going to set up on my own. They said, oh, okay, Ozzy, well, we will support you. And I said to my friends all around the design center, I said, guys, I'm kind of homeless and jobless. I'm going to set up my own company. (laughs) (laughs) And they were like, oh, okay, come to 
come to our showroom, I had a very good, I still am very close to them. Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine, a good, very good company. They said, come, you can come to our showroom and you can be in, uh, in that corner of the showroom. And one day I was cleaning uh, my library. I moved a huge library to their showroom. I made a big mess, big mess. And I took my shoes off. I put my hair in a ponytail and uh, rolled the sleeves. And I was cleaning my library. Yep. No shoes, no nothing. And this lady walked in and said, wow, you look very creative. You have a lot of materials, a lot of books around you. I said, yes, I'm an interior designer. And I just set up my company. It has been three days, I think. Yeah. And she said, okay, do you want to come and have a look at my house? I really like your energy. I really like your optimism. And you're like a puppy. You're just so excited about life. I said, yes, please. Can I come? <laughs> and that was my first client. Fantastic. Fantastic. And I ended up working with the family. So, so, so this was this was in the space of a few days, basically. Two days, so, literally two so days. So you, you set up, but you didn't when you made the decision to set up, you didn't have a job ready or lined up. You didn't um, have a nothing. And I had 40 pounds in my pocket. You had 40 quid in your pocket. And 40 was, quid. And that is honest God truth. 40 quid. And well, I, I was um I was in a stage in my life that I didn't want to borrow any money from people. I just yeah. I finished my master's. I was working and earning good money. Uh, but because I didn't prepare myself mm -hmm. for setting up a company, really, I was spending everything that I was earning, living yeah. life and just set up the company, but never let any opportunity to go past me. Yeah. So when my friend said, come to the showroom, I moved in within minutes. And I started designing their furniture and I was getting involved with everything. I was making coffee to literally to everybody in the design center <laughs> and asking people to come in, come in, come for a coffee. Let me explain who I am. So you get to know me yeah. um, and you will gain a confidence that I can do a very good job. Well, I, I, I suppose that as well, if you were, if you were kind of being one of these, these energetic networkers as well within the design center and you were actually bringing people into the showroom, that it was, awesome. beneficial, it was beneficial to everybody who was there, right? You absolutely nailed it because I believe in the foot flow. Yeah. Yes, um, you know, you can do a lot of stuff on the emails, but foot flow, face to face, let's have a coffee together. Mm -hmm. And I do drink a lot of coffee, which is not good, but <laughs> I always <laughs> invite people, let's get a coffee together. Let me show you what I'm capable, capable of doing. And I go into... Um, I'm quite comfortable having people around and I love it. I thrive by people's energy and getting to know new people. Um, and that's how it started, really, getting, getting the foot flow to, well, I was incredibly lucky that mm -hmm. she walked into the showroom. Yeah. I ended up working in that project for two years. I, and they are still very good friends of mine going forward. Well, we are. 12 years now, 12, 13 years later, 12 years later. So we are still very, very good friends. They're a very big family in Saudi. And um, it's incredible how if you improve your relationships with people and mm. you're very honest, I believe the honesty. I believe in honesty. Honesty is the, my best policy. Honesty is the best policy. Yeah. Then um, you just work very hard. And it pays off. So, so from that from that first client, how did the how did the rest begin to tell us a little bit about how the rest of the company began to evolve and what happened over those next ten years or so? Ten years. Well, I don't remember exactly how those ten years have gone, from sweeping up the floors, private jets, and the yachts, and doing a yacht project, the Paris project, Italy project. It just absolutely snowballed. I got to know the client. Then in that, literally in that project, there was a wonderful construction company. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, we, we are still in touch. He's, he's an Irish man. And he introduced me to another client of his. And I did a very good job for them. Mm -hmm. Then that client has introduced me, his cousin. Then that client has introduced me, uh, his nephew. Then 
the word of mouth. Within the couple of um, projects on my belt, yeah. I got um, a designer to help me out. But I was very honest with her. I said to her, and she, to, to this day, she's a very good friend of mine. And she ended up staying in the company, company for 10 years. And I said to her, I can't pay you much, but trust me, we are going to get big one day. And she never questioned me. She always believed in my uh, vision. Yeah. We got the first office in the design center. And of course, I was inviting everybody there. Mm. And I was incredibly active, incredibly active. And I always have an amazing attitude to work, towards work because I love what I do. Yeah. I absolutely love what I do. This is not a job for me. This is my lifestyle. Mm. It is a lifestyle because design is everywhere. It's not yeah. only, I, d- I don't like saying, I only do residential, commercial, or yachts. No, you do everything. You do a bit chair, you do a furniture, mm-hmm. you design a furniture, you design the lighting, you design the coffers, you design the you design the ventilation where the AC is located, the ventilation, how you hide it in the room, down to the industrial tiny little details, technical details, to the soft furnishings. It's a yeah. whole lot, it's, it's a vision. And attitude towards work. I, I, I got up every day and I was commuting from Buckinghamshire to London. And on those commutes, I used to think a lot and I used to call people a lot to get the things done. Energy is very important. This, uh, this, is, this is really interesting. I mean, I, I, I you know, what, what are the, what were, in terms of networking, and kind of getting in contact with people. What sorts of phone calls were you making? What were you inviting people into? Were you you just telling people about what it was that you were looking to do or how did you grow that network? Uh, Just again, word of mouth. People people said, I, it's one of my biggest assets, I think, is that I get on very well with everybody. Yeah. And, it, it doesn't matter who they are. So you can ask the DHL man, they will know who Ozzy is mm-hmm. because I would have made a coffee for him. And we, we actually, my DHL man, he's the best. I, I actually, <laughs> <laughs> that's a very funny note. He saw me once in the traffic and he was trying to find me to deliver a very important document. And in the traffic lights, he was next to me and we really rolled off the windows and he gave me my my package and that's <laughs> but i love that i love getting to know the people and and word of mouth people say oh okay you need to meet mm. ozzy so um when somebody's looking for a designer uh one client said that he he got seven different recommendations for mm-hmm. seven different people saying ozzy Wow. And that is my biggest asset, I think, just getting to know people and spreading my vision about mm. life. I help everybody equally. They help me out as well in the business. Yeah. And one client, when you do, I'm a great believer, when you do a very good job and you take care of a client, they will recommend you. They will. And, and, f- and for you, what, what, are the, what are the elements to doing a really great job? And, and kind of developing that really powerful relationship with the client? Well, from the beginning, I'm very honest. Right. And if it is going to take three months, it's going to take three months. And I allow for extra couple of weeks. Um, we are very transparent. Very transparent. Right. And I team up with the clients straight away. I am in your family. I am working with you. And what another very big asset that we have is that I don't believe in one look. So one look, my look, my design, my space is different than anyone else. All my clients is different. That's yeah. my look. That's my area. This is my living space. That's my home. That's what I like. But for me, it's very important to get the brief from the client. Right. So I understand them to reflect their own taste 
as best as I can with twisting, correcting, making it bulletproof. So it should be the client's taste, not my taste. If I'm going to copy and paste exactly the look, Mm -hmm. there are plenty of designers and I do not judge anybody. Everybody has their own niche clientele, their own niche thing going on, their path going on. And I never compare myself to left or right. I have my own path. But that's what I do. I create their own world for them. Got it. And that has, that has won a lot of projects for me. A lot. And I, I'm... Each project, when you go in, is so bespoke, is so different, is so unique and shocking. That's what I want to create. I don't want to have to say, oh, of course, it is Aussie interiors because it is like this. No. Uh, otherwise, it's very easy. I can select a few color palettes, a uh, few materials. I can copy and paste. We don't do that. That won me a lot of projects. Right. So actually defining the client's brief and understanding what's important for them Absolutely. as opposed to bringing a, a, a particular house style. Bingo. That, that, the bravo. That is very, very important. So we team up with the client. I have very good, very, very close friendship with them in a way. Mm-hmm. We develop that friendship together. Um, and from the beginning, I'm very transparent and open. And it's a lifestyle. So we text each other at three o'clock in the morning. I actually do. And one of my clients, most probably they will be listening to podcasts. I will be sending them this podcast later on. Um, I was in Monaco Yacht Show yep. having meetings and they were in Cannes. They invited me to go and stay with them and we partied. They are my clients, but we have improved. We have worked on our relationships together mm-hmm. and I have their best interest in my heart. So that if there is a sofa that I love, I want to put it in their house and I know it's going to work and I know that they're going to like it. I source for the best price for them as well. Yeah. So I don't, I don't want to take advantage from anybody because they know me now. Mm-hmm. We have been around for a long time now that they can see we are giving the best service in our capability. So it sounds like a, a really intimate relationship that you're, that you're very skilled at being able to develop with your clients. Yes. One, one, <laughs> that, one that becomes friendship, an advisory role rather than you're just providing a service and it, for, for clients the kind of clients that you work with you tell me who who it is that the, the the type of clients how you would describe them well i have worked with some of the royal families yeah. uh, in saudi yes 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 we can say some of the royal families yeah his excellencies of saudi and um i think it's again <clears throat> it's the attitude my attitude towards work because None of our meetings are boring. That's the thing. We yeah. always giggle. We always laugh. And you, you got it right now, how we operate. We, um, I don't care how many hours a day we're working because some days we do get up at 5 and 5.30 we are working. Yeah. Some days we finish, we, I try to finish with the guys before Corona, 4 o'clock in the afternoon to go to the park to have a picnic. I was on my own because they were all working. They don't want to come with me. <laughs> I, wanna, I say to the guys, let's go to Bluebirds for a champagne. No, sit, we need to work. Okay. Um, <laughs> but just our meetings and just being very creative and mm. not, not a dull moment in the company. And how, that's why. How big is the team now? We are five people. Uh, we are six. Um, but we, we, so these people are the designers, the core designers of the company Mm -hmm. and we get freelancers to come and help us um, because I have restructured the company like this lately during the corona and the reason for that is for various reasons actually one of them is I'm more based in Europe now Mm -hmm. I am (laughs) in Germany Amsterdam Paris and because of Brexit and where I am now, I want to have my designers to come and go to Amsterdam because we're opening uh, opening up in Amsterdam next month. Right. Okay. So you're the first person to know. Fantastic. 
and uh, it's I would like to be in Amsterdam. So um, we are going to set up a team in there as well. Amsterdam and Germany. And, 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 is, and this is primarily driven by Brexit and kind of more complications of people coming and going out, in and out exactly. of London. Right. So it is because of the Brexit, as well as we are more concentrated on the yachts and the yachts that we are working. The shipyards is in Germany, in Bremen. And um, what, what I would like to achieve is to keep my name and keep my company and everything in here with my designers, but also have a branch in there. That's how OS Designs and Partners have been born. So I have made the company bigger now to have the branches around the world because we have done a lot of projects in Cyprus. We have done a lot of projects in Italy, Paris, and the materials, shipping materials weren't a problem. And most probably it won't be a problem anymore. I don't know after the Brexit and now that we are easing off from the lockdown, but nevertheless, Amsterdam is a happening place at the moment. We just wanted to have more parties in Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. That sounds like a good, <laughs> a, a good strategy. So how, how do you find the right people? How do you attract the right team members? Uh, for me, um, it has been from the beginning. It's all about attitude to, to work. Yes. Flexibility adaptability so if we start at 10 o'clock that person shouldn't care or 11 o'clock but we finish at 6 7 of course we are going to work around the family and you know if they have a family and the kids mm -hmm. that's that's completely different but we we are very flexible and you met hb so yep. <laughs> you know how we operate now and one, the, my first employee, Jo, uh, the lady that we have discussed, her attitude towards work was, the, was so perfect. Mm -hmm. she, she was like me. She was always excited about every day. We were like two puppies trying to gain jobs. And I think first couple of months, people felt sorry for me thinking, oh my God, bless her. She's so excited about life. So... Let's try her out. <laughs> I think that happened. But then this has become the norm. And mm. people really came to us because of that. Um, but she studied textile design. She didn't study interiors. And I'm a party architect. Yeah. And for me, it's not about this. It's not about the, of course, we are a huge believer, believer of education. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's all about attitude towards work. Right. adaptability, jumping in, because let's be honest, you're not going to design every day. You're not going to do that every day. It's not always very arty and very, um, very creative all the time. Mm -hmm. There is a boring side of this as well. There are a lot of Excel spreadsheets, a lot. Well, in my company anyway, because uh, we need to give, so you design something so amazing, but you need to execute that. So you need to put it to a client in a way that they understand as an Excel spreadsheet and you sum it up. So you say to the client, look at the row 189. This is a sum. That's how much you need to pay. <laughs> so that is very important. That's the boring side of it. And, and, and is that something that, that, that you do or do you have other people in the office who really love spreadsheets who do that? Or is that something that you all know that, okay, we have to, we all need to do it. We all need that's the thing. Is a, that's why I keep my my team is quite small. Yeah. For the amount of work we have, uh, we should be triple the size. Mm -hmm. But we are also struggling to find people that want to do everything. That's why I keep on saying attitude, adaptability, and flexibility, because we jump in to improve our website. And then jump in what the next minute you are doing the design for the client. Mm -hmm. Then you're trying to find concept images for the client. Then you're doing an Excel spreadsheet. Oh, we need to do the accounts. Although we have a full-time accountant and a bookkeeper, but there are some of the things that I have spent 
and I know what it is about, so I need to inform them. There are so many aspects in owning your own company. There are so many aspects of having a small team. Mm -hmm. We have got much bigger. I didn't like it. Because you kind of lose the lose that personal touch. And my clients didn't like it either. Right. My clients know all each uh, designer in my company and they love them. They cherish them because we all have my vision. Of course, my clients, my, my designers, they have their own vision and I listen to them. But our DNAs have merged in so well together. Right. So for us, that is very, very important. So if I send to my clients every day someone else, they won't like it. No, that's not going to work. In my company, it will not work. In other companies, it might work. Each company has their own DNAs. And what, and what's, what, what's the screening process? When you, well, how do you know when you need a new tem- team member? And what's the screening process that you put people through? Do you know what happens, Ryan? I literally wake up in the morning and say, okay, we need a new person to come and help us on this, 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 this. Then I let the team know and we hire. That's how it works. We don't have very, um, how shall I say, structured Got it. <laughs> way of doing it because, yeah, because it just comes to the stage that you, you really do need a helping hand, another helping hand, and the company is growing or shrinking. You need to adapt to the current circumstances. And I know that quite well from setting up my company in the middle of recession, when everybody said to me, you're gonna fall flat on your face. Yeah. Pretty much everybody said, you're gonna fall flat on your face because if you remember in the recession, they, well, it was quite hard. So who needs an interior designer? Because somebody needs it. Mm -hmm. So I set it up and we do, I learned how to survive in the minimum as a company. So we always adapt to the current things. You look what's happening. We have the corona, we have uh, Brexit, and we have been locked down. We are easing off from the lockdown. When we're coming out, out of lockdown, actually Europe is in lockdown still. Yeah. So you need to adapt to circumstances. You need to adapt what's happening now. So that's why I don't structure it. When people said to me, did you have a business plan? I don't know how to do a business plan. No. But put me in an interview, I will gain the job. Fantastic. One of the things are not only on the paper. It is not only on the paper. Your paperwork has to be in line with what you're doing, of course. Yeah. You need to go in and be very confident and gain your jobs. That's very important. So it's, it's people, people, people is what, I'm, is what it sounds like. I have been saying all my life, uh, first of all, who chooses the presidents, prime ministers? Who? We all do. We go and vote, don't we? Absolutely. People open people's doors. Yeah. That's it. Do a very good job. Be enthusiastic. Find your niche. Don't let any of the opportunities to go past and don't have an ego. I cleaned floors for my client. Mm-hmm. I clean toilets because somebody used the toilet just before the client walked in, in a 30 million pound project. What do you do? Well, you can't call the cleaner to come in. The client is coming in 10 minutes. What do you do? You really get the um, domestos. <laughs> and start cleaning, you really do. It doesn't matter if you have master's or Harvard degree, you really do. <laughs> so we, we have been flown with private jets and cleaning, just getting the thing done. Yeah. That's very important. Where does the, where does the hunger come from? Where does the energy come from? <laughs> I think I was born like this. <laughs> And it, is it is it something that you can learn, or is it is it just a, a natural thing? And and obviously, you know, as, as I said at the beginning of the interview, like the, your energy is very is contagious, right? And 
how you're describing your business is, is very organic and like exactly. you've, you've, very got, organic. you've got the ability to build the network and the network starts to bring more, you know, you've got very good long lasting relationships with clients. They become re- repeat clients. I imagine that when you're looking for new team members, that your network is able to provide it because it's so expansive and it's, you know, you can put the word out very quickly and say, we're looking for somebody new who's got this and this and this skills. And by the end of a couple of days, you've probably got a handful of. I I know it. Well, within, within one day, we have a lot of applicants, but within meeting with somebody within five minutes, I would know if they can work with us and adapt to this lifestyle because sometimes it can be very stressful, but going back to your question about the energy, um, uh, it's yeah, you can learn. You you absolutely can learn this. I um, I'm a great believer of if something doesn't work, I don't dwell over it. You close the subject, you move on. Mm-hmm. And if you go over it, over it, over it, over it, you, you become very depressed. There yeah. are so many things that don't work for me either in my life. Um, yes, there is a successful company and we have done very well. Um, and I'm so proud of that. But I have worked nonstop when people were asleep. I was up for about 10 years at half four in the morning or five o'clock in the morning commuting to London because we couldn't, I couldn't afford to buy a place in London. And it's just every day is a new, new um new chapter every day is a new thing you can make the best of it you can make it better than yesterday and i read a lot and i travel a lot and i search a lot and i take a lot of photos and something doesn't work just close the book and move on learn from it but move on meaning just leave that behind you. Being an entrepreneur is that. Mm. Being, because I don't consider myself only a designer. I'm an entrepreneur. I have my 10 fingers dipped in 10 different things that people don't know. I have other companies. I have made investments. And that is just, a, I'm so hungry of living the best, the most. Let's party. Let's work hard and party. I don't care if we earn 50 pounds from a a project. If we have had the most fun, of course, you can't do that very regularly. It's not very good for the business. Don't do that. (laughs) But you understand the essence of it. Yeah. Yeah. And for me, it's all about the energy in the company. We are like, come on, guys. Let's make the coffees and the teas and let's create something so amazing today. Brilliant. And they're all in the same mindset with us. And if we have a person in the company is always down, always, it just, I really do encourage them a lot to come to this kind of um, attitude towards, Mm. towards life. We are all, sportive people we always work out and we always um just bring that energy to work how how did you guys adapt and were flexible with covid over the last year obviously that's been quite a constraint and i can't imagine you're the type of person that likes to be boxed into an apartment for too long oh my god so um i have been incredibly lucky with my team yep Incredibly lucky, of course, I have chosen them to be in this company because I have seen the spark in their eyes. And we have, there have been some days that was very low for all of us, not only in my team, for all the people around the world that we all thought, man, is this ever going to finish? Yeah. But we powered it through. So I have done a YouTube, like, first time when we locked down and I said this is the perfect time to concentrate on all aspects in your company if you have a company look at your website look at your accounts go through every inch of your company make the 
best of your company. Um, if you don't have a company and you have your colleagues, be in touch with your colleagues, be active. We are allowed to go for a walk, go for a walk. Don't let yourself go. We can read a lot. And that's the thing we have done. We stick together. We stick together. We have had a lot of FaceTimes. We have had a lot of giggly times <laughs> on the on the FaceTime. And um, we, we always checked up on each other. We always said, are you okay? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. And we, we kind of agreed gave ourselves to sports even more, you know, in a way that we damaged our, some of our muscles, but <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't very good. Well, what's, what's the favorite office sport? Well, uh, what, well, we do a lot of hit sessions. Hit sessions. Matteo really likes, one of my uh, colleagues really likes, one of my designer really likes tennis. And one of the, one of them really likes running and long walks like, we are always checking. We are always secretly competing, competing, competing with each other. Is that the right word? Yeah. <laughs> competing with each other. I have walked today 15,000 uh, steps. What did you do? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> so we powered it through and kind of a different creativity happened because, again, you had to adapt and you had to be flexible of what's happening. It's all digital now. It's all digital. So we actually FaceTime our clients. I was showing my book to the clients like this. Look, this is what I'm trying to create. I am doing a little sketches and sending it to them and saying, I'm holding it up on the screen. And thanks to all my clients that supported us during this time because we delivered 11 projects within the space of 10 months. Wow. It was very hard. Yeah. It was very hard. It was triple hard, 10 times harder than normal times because you are constantly fighting with another regulation. Mm -hmm. Are we allowed to do this? We're not allowed to do that. And you can't chuck all your uh, tradesmen into the project because of the COVID. But all my clients believed in us and said, Oz, we want to improve this. We want to do this. We have opened one of our biggest projects that we worked with Western Homes in Stansted Skyway. And we have been in, thanks to the chairman believing in us, that we have been in every newspaper, <laughs> every magazine. And that was only in September last year, bang in the middle of COVID and still the lockdown. Mm. Still, we powered it through. It was very hard, but powered it through. How uh, to talk a little bit about the winning the work and the kind of the details of having those arrangements kind of confirmed, if you like. How do you negotiate your fees with clients, and how do you make sure that they're the right fees? And do you ever have any issues there, like late pay, late paid invoices or? Disputes or disagreements. That's a good question, Ryan. Such a good question because when you don't have the experience, yes, you do have the problems, and you can't judge from the beginning how much you're going to spend in mm -hmm. the project, how much time you're going to spend in the project. But the more experience you gain, you say, ah, <laughs> the last time I lost a lot of money or a lot of time, so. Um, Okay, how do you gain the projects? I think your personality needs to come across and your interaction with the client is very important. Yeah. For me, they none of my clients or none of the people when they have when I when we were tendering for the jobs, they never said to me, Do you have masters? Well, what did you study? By the way, I studied with arch architect, well, architects for five years. And I have a part A degree and I did interior architecture. Then I did my master's. Mm -hmm. And now I'm in, uh, in this lockdown, I have taken the benefit of having more time to try to do finish my Harvard as a kind of MBA. Yeah. Nobody asks you that. Yeah. No. And even sometimes I have gone in with the portfolio, very, very big portfolio. They didn't even look at the portfolio. They didn't. What happened is a very nice, smooth talk 
interaction, attitude towards work, attitude towards your client or towards that person and giving the confidence when you are getting interviewed, getting, give, giving the confidence to people to say, do you know what? I am capable of finding the materials for you, getting your vision across. So that attitude, I have been very lucky that wherever I, I have gone or whatever phone call, even the most difficult phone calls that I had to make to the clients because the delivery didn't arrive or we can't meet with the deadline, which is the honesty, honest answer. I'm not hiding anything. I'm not cheating. I'm not lying. I have to deal with these problems head on. Yeah. And I have been very lucky that never lost a job in, in the career. Um, because people can see, I think, that whatever happens in the company, even if we are having hurricanes in the company, because somebody's sick and uh, materials haven't been delivered and the delivery hasn't happened and the company is shut because of the COVID, they don't need to know what hurricanes is happening, screaming and shouting is happening in the company. They don't need to know. I deliver. We deliver. We make it happen. But man alive, till to get to that stage, I think my employees can write you an essay of <laughs> how stressed they have been and how crazy we worked. And but it's a it's a complete roller coaster. Got it, got it. And 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 so in terms of setting the fees, you were saying that ah. with, with 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 experience, you're starting to understand, okay. We recognize we lost money on this project. We know now on this, on this project. Um, how, how, do you, how do you present your fees? Do you present them as a proposal or do you talk people through them? Both. So right. it depends on the space. Okay. It depends. If you're designing a room, it's different than if you're designing a 20,000 square feet house. And if you are, how much are you going to get involved in in my company, we can get involved as much as the project management and application to the council, mm -hmm. planning permissions. So how much do you want me to get involved? Do you want me to do only the concept design or do you want me to finish and give you the keys back? Because we have done all. We have, uh, we have been the client rep. We have been the project managers. We have been the uh, lead designers in mm -hmm. very, very big projects. Or we have done only the concept designs and send it to Saudi, send it to Russia, send it to Kazakhstan. And they take my vision and they execute in there. So it depends what the brief is. Right. depends what the job is. Then you need to align yourself with other designers. Ah, if you think, this is a, just a general advice, if you think you are the best designer and you want to charge double, it's up to you. But... We are always very sensible with our charging. So mm -hmm. I write a proposal and we say, it depends on the project again. You can have 25% upfront or 50% upfront, depends. If it is a design concept only is different than if you're gonna manage the project for the next five years. Yeah. Then I run through the proposal with them and I make them very comfortable and we start. So the, the client, the, the client or the company that you're working with, they need to understand exactly how you're charging. Yeah. Go and ahead. what they are going to get in each stage of the charging. That's very important. So we complete a section. We get paid for it. The next section, you're going to get all of those. Have you got all of those? Yes. This is the invoice. And, and so sometimes when you're approaching a client and say they – you know, you, you think the project needs, well, let me rephrase that. Do you ever get the situation when you're with the client and they don't know what they need yet? Mm -hmm. And they, they're not sure whether they need concept design or they want the whole process to be managed by you or they want to have it delivered by local, you know, if it's a, it's a foreign project. How do you help them establish what they need? Okay, it depends on where the project is because right. I would like okay. that's all. So if the project is in Italy and I can't go there, but we are talking about before COVID, um, I can't go there every day, every, okay, one of the team members can go there to manage the project. 
can be a solution. But um, it depends where the project is. Of course, I would like to run the project myself, not only because of the financial side of the things, no. And sometimes it doesn't even pay off mm -hmm. to run the project yourself because you're so much involved. Uh, the designers are so much involved that you can't take new projects on. So sometimes financially it doesn't pay off to be the project manager, the whole thing, to right. get involved completely. But um, when you're managing the project yourself, so you can manage everybody, the electrician, the mechanical engineer. So if you want to put a ventilation somewhere, you kind of, as a designer, you can say, guys, I want the ventilation in here because I want to hide it. I want to manage the whole cabinetry as well, all the bespoke solutions. I want to choose the kitchen tap for you. I want to do the kitchen design for you because it, it, it is following the whole thing. Hmm. So I'm not choosing a sofa only. We are not a designer to choose a sofa and the cushions over it and throw the sofa, throw the throw over it. Um, that we can do. That's not our speciality because we take the whole project from the beginning and we deliver to you the complete project, the complete thing. So you, if you are in charge of the whole thing, you can then uh, go into the details of the floor build-ups and how thick the marble is. Do you want underfloor heating? Do you want a lighting detail on the curtains? Do you want um, picture lighting? So these kind of things create the whole ambiance, the whole right. atmosphere. When you're in charge, of the whole team is a harmony. You are conducting an orchestra. Got it. And if it is flowing harmonious together, it's a successful project. Done. Got it. And so, and so your, your preference is to do that generally. It, it is my preference. But again, Ryan, it all depends on where the project is. Yeah. I can't do that in Saudi. I can't do that in Paris. But that's one of the reasons that we wanted to open up in Europe, in Germany and Amsterdam, because we can be much closer to our clients in there as well. And I can travel. Mm -hmm. uh, when you think it's not very far to travel. So we do have projects in Europe that I would like to be involved. So I do prefer to be involved a lot in projects. Yes. Uh, interestingly, you, you were saying how you've got such a, an international array of, of clients. What are the, some of the the cultural differences that you've had to learn or adapt to? Or, or are there any? Or are people, just, are people just people wherever they are in the world? Uh, huge cultural differences. Huge. Working with a, a Scandinavian uh, client is completely different than working with a Chinese client, than working with an English and working with Saudi. There is huge cultural difference. And again, go back to the beginning of this podcast when we said flexibility, adaptability, and attitude. These three things, if you don't have it, you can't work internationally. You can't. Because their culture is different. My culture is different. What we are used to is different in Cyprus. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not uh, flexible enough to work with a Saudi gentleman, which they're really, uh, because their culture is different, yeah. and the expectation is different. Working in Europe is different than working in England. Mm -hmm. uh, the tradesmen, their mentality is different. So that, again, attitude, adaptability, and flexibility brings you those core elements that um, can take it, can, can take the company, can take the person to the next level. And merging your style with the client's uh, expectation. It's all about managing the expectations. Fantastic. I suppose just to, to wrap up here with one final question. Um, if you were to meet yourself 10 years ago, 12 years ago, when you were first setting up, <laughs> what, would you, what piece of advice would you bestow on yourself? That's such a hard question. Um, 10 years ago, don't be that scared. <laughs> Everything will be okay. And if it is not okay, it's not the end yet. 
because at the end, everything will be okay. I wish if looking at it now, I wish I, I was a bit more ballsy and I wish I was a bit, I was very brave and I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of what I have achieved, but I wish I was, um, yeah, maybe a bit braver, a little bit more crazy and make the most of what I had a bit more partying, although I partied a lot. <laughs> I worked so hard and I partied very, very hard. But some of the things I would have done it differently, I would have adapted. Um, I have commuted a lot and that used to absolutely kill me. Maybe I should have addressed that differently. Mm. Maybe um, I should have um, taken Instagram seriously because people were saying to me, you need to be on in Instagram like how many years ago? And I was like, uh, no, I don't need to be. But we are where we are now. If I give any advice to people is to adapt themselves to the realistic goals every day now. Now, whether it is your sports or your company, and find your niche straight away. I found my niche. I was very confident of what I was going to do. If you know that and you don't consider that as a job, I'm getting paid by doing my hobby for life. So, um, yes, that's, that's what Wonderful. I would have done. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. And what's, and what's the rest of 2021 got planned for you? Oh my God, so many amazing things. So we're coming out of lockdown now. <laughs> uh, we're, getting, we're all getting excited here in the UK. We're finally allowed to start moving around a little bit more. The sun is shining. Well, we have, sun is shining. I love where I am at the stage of the company and I love where I am personally. Um, I'm building a house with, uh, with my fiance in Germany. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Very, very big project and it's an amazing project and we are having so much fun building the house together. Building your own house as a designer is something else, honestly, yep. because you kind of debate yourself a little bit. You, if it was my clients, I would have been like, right, this is the lighting plan. This is this, this is this. That's it. You're done. Every two minutes I'm calling him. I'm like, um, should we do this or that? What do you think? <laughs> We are loving this stage and the company is in a stage that we are having so much fun with our projects. And I just want to choose the most perfect projects that I can mold. I can make it each masterpiece. I'm not going to just to tick the boxes to say, yes, we have done the lighting diagram, it's done. Or we have done the furniture design, it's done. I'm really looking at everything in a very detailed eye. Mm -hmm. because I really want to have a name after I'm gone from this world I want to have a name that people say this was Ozzy's project and for me it's very important so we have very very exciting things coming up we have very exciting new launch of companies coming up and it is just very creative at the moment very creative fantastic excellent Oz <laughs> I think that's the perfect place for us to conclude thank you so much for your time and your contribution and your adaptability and your flexibility <laughs> in this conversation um, there's some really really great themes there that you've you've brought out and you know just the the way that you've grown the business and how you network and and your energy I think there's so much value in there. So thank you very much for sharing. Thank you so much, Ryan, for having me. Thank you. Have a lovely, lovely day. And I will be always following you. I love what you do. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that's a wrap. And don't forget, if you want to access your free training to learn how to structure your firm or practice for freedom, fulfillment and profit, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you'd like to speak to one of our advisors directly, follow the link in the information. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond or commitment except to help you be unstoppable.